Let's talk about some blockchains today and get into a little bit more of a deep dive on specific projects. And you guys have been asking for different projects, so we thought today will be one of those special times and we'll get uh, into it. We're going to talk about ICP. I don't think you want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me today is Dominic Williams, who is the founder and chief scientist over at Definity. Welcome back. Hey, Paul. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so it's been two years since we had you back on the show. Uh, we've had an uprising in our uh, YouTube channel uh, and our social, all asking for ICP. Give us an update. Give us an update. So I said, all right, we'll, we'll reach out to Dominic and find out what's up. So anyway, Dominic, let's go right into it. Tell us uh, in the past couple of years, first of all, what have been some of the big advancements with ICP you can share? Well, um, you know, the network transitioned into production mode in uh, May 2021 after sort of six plus years of um, R&D. Um, R&D, of course, con has continued since. I think uh, the Internet Computer Network incorporates more than a thousand person years of R&D. So it's a huge endeavor. And uh, the network's never gone down. So it's worked incredibly well. There are now mm -hmm. hundreds of um, projects running on the internet computer. And it's really proven this um, world computer paradigm that um, one day everything can run from, from a blockchain. And uh, today we have, you know, things like social networks running on the internet computer. Um, yeah. Some of them, you know, very highly interactive, like, like OpenChat. And what distinguishes uh, the paradigm is that with traditional blockchains, um, you only really host uh, you know, tokens, NFTs, not usually uh, the NFT content, just links to the NFT content, and little bits of DeFi logic on the, on the blockchain itself. And uh, when you interact with a Web3 game or something like that, it's, it's generally running on, you know, a big tech cloud like Amazon Web Services. The difference with the internet computer is that everything runs from uh, the blockchain itself. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely game-changing advance. And uh, as a consequence, you know, it processes very large numbers of, of transactions. Um, and you can see there it's processing about 230 ETH equivalent transactions a second currently. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's by the only, the only um, you know, public network uh, in, in the space that has these kind of capabilities. And um, we're just pleased to see it develop. Um, new things that are coming out include uh, uh, incredible multi-chain capabilities. So people have been using the internet computer as a kind of layer two for Bitcoin, for example, um, creating a, a Bitcoin twin called Chanky Bitcoin, which you can transfer in one second at extremely low cost. Um, an increasing focus on AI. So people are already running uh, AI models of smart contracts. And developments this year will uh, allow them to run those AI models um, even more efficiently as smart contracts. And uh, something else coming uh, this year is, is called Utopia. Um, and it's it allows enterprises who aren't ready um, to build on a public network yet to essentially create their own compatible private internet computers. So there are a couple of things here. I think for some people, they may not necessarily be fully aware of just ICP's broad uh, approach to how blockchain really kind of reinvents the opportunity around cloud compute and what the internet is up today. Most people know, hey, I've got my Amazon servers over here. I know that cloud is going to be a big part of AI and most likely blockchain will be integrated that in the future. Where does um, internet computer and Definity fall in the way of, because I, I was looking back on your homepage there and I think you had, yeah, here you go your $5 a gig per year. So this is smart contract memory. What's the capacity of, of cloud compute for ICP? Is that something you mentioned AI? Is that something that could also integrate into ICP as a, as a, a plan going forward? Absolutely. So, um, you know, if you run an AI model, um, such as something like stability AI that generates images or a large language model that can answer questions. If you run that um, on a traditional cloud service, of course, it's fragile and, and it's not hack proof. And right. we believe that um, as AI develops and, and people um, start to depend on it 
more and more, it's going to be absolutely essential that it can't be hacked and it's um, unstoppable, um, I, I incredibly resilient. And uh, the solution we see is that AI should run a smart contracts on, on the internet computer. Okay. So that, well, that would solve a lot of the challenges and I think some of the issues that AI brings to you know modern day business, because this is a concern, I think, in general of what that's going to look like. I was looking at a tweet right here and I wanted to bring up, and we'll bring up DPIN in general, but you guys are leading the category right now in DPIN, Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks, yeah. for those of you. Uh, and there's a lot of, of really good projects in DPIN. I think DPIN is really one of the core use cases and utility of where blockchain truly is going in the future. When you look at DPIN as a strategy for what you're trying to do, what new things and, and what potential opportunities are there for Definity? So DPIN is an interesting category. I think um, it's important um, not to imagine the internet computer as a network of servers or something like that that are being rented right. out though. So it's true that the internet computer runs on sovereign hardware. Uh, and in that, I think it's really the second blockchain to do, do so. The first, of course, is, is Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is created by miners who have this dedicated hardware, hashing hardware. And what's interesting is actually that both Bitcoin and the internet computer have autological names, like they're kind of descriptive names rather than brand, brands. Um, Filecoin's the same. And uh, you know, that contrasts uh, quite strongly with traditional proof of stake blockchains uh, that run predominantly in, you know, on big tech's cloud. Um, right. The internet computer is really a fundamental um, play to extend the capabilities of the public internet. So, I mean, really, yeah. it's, if you think about it, it's kind of the core of what uh, Tim Berners-Lee was trying to do when this thing was built in the beginning, as opposed to the centralized problem that we're now facing around uh, these massive server farms, such as whether it's uh, you know Amazon, AWS, et cetera. So I would agree with you is that that really kind of creates a, a unique proposition going forward. But again, it's back to the security issues and things like that that fall into this. A couple of other things, when you look at ICP as a blockchain and you think about the other blockchains that are out there that, you know, we'll, we'll say an example, Solana equals payments. Mm. Um, Avalanche, yeah. I would say, is kind of gaming. You know, they're, they're moving into that. Maybe, um, maybe tokenized securities and, and real world assets. W where would ICP fall? Well, you know, there's a sort of, I think blockchain is very much about narratives and, you know, people use different um, uh, verticals as their narrative. Um, mm -hmm. The internet computer is really about compute, which is a much more general thing. Compute underpins everything. We yeah. believe in blo blockchain singularity. And blockchain singularity means that everything, all systems and services, will run from the blockchain itself. So uh, to, 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 to contrast with, with a chain like Avalanche, um, yeah, they talk about gaming a lot, but you know, really, those games aren't built on the blockchain. That they're, they're running off sure. Amazon, Amazon Web Services, and then you know, at key moments in those games, um, you'll be bumped out to perform a transaction in a wallet mm -hmm. like MetaMask, and you know, exchange some tokens from for an NFT or something like that. But the game isn't um, on the blockchain at all. It's really just a sort of figment of language that we've ended up using in the blockchain industry. We say that. If the token's on the blockchain, then the Web3 service, whether it's a social network yeah. or a game, is on, is on the blockchain. Um, the, the internet computer um, ecosystem uses that word much more literally. So if someone says, like, open chat, which is a sort of social network chat messaging service, uh, runs on the internet computer or is on, on the internet computer, they actually mean it. You know, the whole thing runs end to end on, on the internet computer. And there are huge advantages um, that, that can derive from, from this paradigm. So, for example, OpenChat uh, runs under the control of a special kind of DAO called a service nervous system. And uh, all updates that are made to OpenChat go through that service nervous system DAO. So the developers propose updates to the service nervous system. And then, you know, it's a community of like, you know, tens of thousands that decide whether or not those updates should be pushed into the running service. And so that's really realizing this Web3 dream where, you know, users 
um, are given true ownership. So in a sense, it's kind of like, you know, converting uh, internet services into something like an NFT that where there's like communal ownership. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the last time you and I talked and I kind of walked away, I went back and watched that interview and I kind of walked away at that time that this is an, a huge initiative. So obviously you guys have stuck around. The initiative is still underway. And you look at the kind of the shift that, that's been happening in tech in general. I think there's been a lot of pressure, obviously, from the EU uh, as well. I wanted to jump to a press release you guys did. This was an announcement of uh, the European subnet launched on ICP. This is uh, GDPR. So this is uh, you know kind of the privacy uh, situation that's happening in the in the EU uh, around decentralized apps. So uh, this is a big deal. Developers now on subnet have access to a suite of tools that can be leveraged to release DApps in the EU that protect per personal infinite. This is going to be a big situation in the EU and in general. I think across all of blockchain, but more importantly across these governments that are probably starting to deal with blockchain for the first time. How big of a deal is this for ICP? Well, I, I think that regulation is coming to crypto, whether we like yeah, it or not. Whether you like and, it or not, yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, uh, uh, blockchains have to, you know, adopt practices and functionality that will enable people building on them to be successful. And uh, with respect to the internet computer, um, you know, it's it, the internet computer is like a single seamless environment. Um, behind the scenes, it's created by uh, subnet blockchains that that mm -hmm. are able, you know, whose capacity can be sort of combined into one. Um, but um, and, and these subnet blockchains are composed from node machines that are combined by the the network's governance system. And of course, the nodes are chosen to be independent in the sense that they're owned and operated by different. Uh, node providers, and they're installed in different data centers and different geographies and, and, and different jurisdictions. Yeah. And um, the network maximizes the decentralization of these sort of hidden subnets that way. But, um, you know, all things being equal, if you upload a canister smart contract to the internet computer, um, that, you know, is, is going to end up being replicated all over the world, uh, right? And uh, if you're in Europe, um, you know, th that can cause problems with this GDPR regulation, which says that, you know, the personal data of uh, European users has to stay within the EU. So the idea is that um, you, uh, it'll extend beyond just this one case that, you know, when you upload a canister smart contract to the internet computer, you can tag it with GDPR. And when you do that, it'll only be um, it'll essentially be uploaded to a, a subnet blockchain uh, that only has node machines within the EU. And so it's only, you know, the data is only replicated within the EU. And that will enable um, people building, for example, you know, an enterprise system um, on the internet computer to be compliant. Mm -hmm. well, okay, so obviously we're going to see devs continue to build within this, you know, this ecosystem. What is the uh, the attractive nature of one devs coming on board? How hard is it? You know, a lot of blockchains now are courting new project devs, everything from gaming to payments, you name it. Uh, some of them have really opened up, you know, kind of in the sense of, you know, very communicative. How are you guys doing that? How, how is uh, the ICP really going about bringing in the best talent in the industry? Well, you know, the internet computer has always been a sort of technology first project, and um, that's reflected by the scale of the R&D operation and the contributes um, technology to it. I, I think I mentioned it's like represents more than a thousand person years of R&D. Um, so historically, we've been sort of less business development oriented, but you know we have given out, uh, and Definity Foundation has given out um, some number of grants to developers and things like that, and we make sure there's fantastic documentation and the tooling's wonderful. Um, that approach differs a little bit to a lot of other major blockchains which have raised massive amounts of money and often yeah. you know, will invest you know, even tens of millions of dollars in, in people who are willing to build you know, on, on those chains. Um, and that's a different approach. It's more of a kind of flywheel approach. Mm -hmm. um, and what we find really interesting and encouraging is that if you look at the amount of money 
that's been uh, spent across the ecosystem to get people to build on the internet computer. Um, typically, it's it's about you know per 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 developer, it's like sort of two two hundred x less than these major chains, which you know in, invest a lot of money to. To, to kind of encourage people to build that, oftentimes by saying, look, we'll invest in your project and things like that. Mm-hmm. So right. the internet computers are, are you know, genuinely a sort of grassroots organic ecosystem. And we think that in the long run, you know, these big blockchains that um, have sometimes uh, had you know, cash inflows of billions of dollars into their ecosystems you know, may find it's difficult to sustain in, in the long run, because you know, sometimes people have, for example, invested $20, $30 million into games companies in order to get them to build using their blockchain. And um, you know, typically, it'll just be a game, and the idea is that, that there'll be an NFT on the blockchain involved. Yeah. Um, the challenge yeah. with that is that you know, those, those games companies you know, t- t- typically end up with quite a big burn rate, and at some point, you know, their runway will expire, and they're going to need um, follow-on rounds of investment and things like that. And um, so you know we're very you know encouraged that the internet computers ecosystem uh, doesn't run on that kind of model, and it's yeah. organic. And yet, you know, if you look at the size of the ecosystem, the number of developers, um, it's it's not that much smaller than some of these like you know in verticals leading chains that have had billions of dollars, um, multi billion dollar inflows into their ecosystems to, 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 and, and to get people building that. Well, I think, you know, the issue is narratives. You, if you look at the industry right now, it's, it's much like any emerging tech industry, whether you look back all the way back into the birth of the internet, mobile, social, digital. I mean, you could, you could look at any one of those major advancements in the period in time in which we saw early companies come to market. Typically, it's been like the model you just mentioned, which is a lot of money coming in, blue sky on the outside, and maybe something hits. So my question is, when you look at the blockchain, because we're, we're nearing a point of reflection in blockchain, we talk about it all the time here on this show, is retail, uh, business in general, now Wall Street, all starting to embrace blockchain maybe for the really the first real time. We got real utility coming at us. You know, if you look at what's happening with Wall Street, most likely J- JP Morgan, tokenized securities, real world assets, companies like Nike making real moves, Visa just coming in. So this is the first time I've seen it in many, many years of real companies doing real things. And to your point, some of these chains are using this as a narrative to push that chain forward. So what keeps them in the way of devs, because the minute you get a big win, let's just take uh, Polygon and, and Nike. You know, let's look at Artifact. You get a big win there, all of a sudden Polygon is uh, the, the golden child. What is going to keep those da- devs and dApps from not continuing that direction versus coming a, maybe over to something like what you guys are doing on ICP? Well, there's two, uh, there's, there's, there's two parts to answer. I mean, firstly, um, you know, I, I think we've all got a Ask you know, how sustainable is this model where you know blockchains, you know sometimes spend um, tens of millions of dollars to get a customer. I think Polygon um, was reported as spending twenty million dollars on a deal with Starbucks to to host mm, a kind of Odyssey. royalty NFT. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I've heard actually that the real cost is more, more like fifty million dollars. Um, you know, if, if you do that a few times, you've quickly got through a few hundred million dollars, right? Um, and so, you know, I'd question how sustainable that is, and and that's why, you know, we we, we like the, the fact that you know the internet computer ecosystem um, has this what called cost per acquisition, if you like. You know, if you look at the ecosystem as a whole, like it's um, acquired developers at like one two hundredth the cost, and and that's because of the strength of the technology, and we, we think that's more sustainable. The the other part of the answer is, um, you know, we're sort of coming at a much more fun coming at it from a much more fundamental angle, um, we, we don't think about individual narratives like this is the blockchain for NFTs or this is the blockchain for finance. Right. Um, we, see, we see blockchain much more generally as, as a compute platform mm-hmm. and, and believe in blockchain singularity. Like all, all of society's infrastructure really runs on com- computers now. And we, we want um, worldwide society to build its um, critical and all, 
all pretty much all this infrastructure, right? IT infrastructure on on blockchain because, uh, for example, this solves one of the biggest problems of our time, um, which is cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is uh, you know becoming as big an issue as war and climate change. I think by the end of this year, cyber crime generally um, is estimated to cost. Ten trillion dollars a year. Right. So that's right. you know coming up from forty percent of the GDP of the United States. So the wonderful thing when you build um, systems or services on the internet computer is that you don't need cybersecurity. So for example, um, I think I mentioned Open Chat. It's a social network. It's a highly interactive chat messaging service with lots of group chats and things. Um, that that uh, service actually has crypto inside of it. Right, yeah. in, in the sense that people can use their chat accounts as crypto wallets and send crypto with chat message in chat messages, and yet that service um, has run successfully for two and a half years now, and it's not protected by a firewall. It's not protected by anti-malware um, shielding it from viruses and ransomware. Um, it doesn't have a security team, and uh, I think that speaks to what's possible uh, more broadly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, within the world of computing, like why would anyone choose to build on traditional IT infrastructure that's completely insecure and you have to try and protect it with firewalls and things like that? And of course, it's also vastly more resilient. It's never, never had any downtime. So, and, and by the way, it's 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 developed by a pretty small team of developers. So, uh, you know, working with this sort of serverless smart contract code can also be a hell of a lot more productive. So we see, you know, um, blockchain. Um, as an alternative to the traditional IT stack. Um, that's why it wouldn't make any sense for the internet computer to run on Amazon Web Services. It runs on it right. on this solid hardware run by no providers. Uh, we want people to build the systems and services to, of tomorrow on chain, on the internet computer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very different model. There's no other technology in the world today that can and it, that makes that paradigm possible. And of course, yeah. um, you know, uh, you know, we're talking about the the, the foundational layer in a sense of, of society because society is powered by computerization. So if you right. can update the foundations yeah. and, and improve them and give them new capabilities, um, you can also, uh, you know, uh, cradle kinds of uh, wonderful um, ad advantages and benefits higher up the stack. Yeah, I think the the point that a lot of people look at is, you know, if if ICP is going to be successful with the future of where the internet is going to go, I look at it in the sense of what you're saying in terms of cybersecurity, the potential of really kind of a, a sovereign internet, so to speak. Uh, why have we not seen more nation states, more more governments really starting to look at this particular technology as being the solution? As Because this would essentially insulate one of the biggest problems we have in potentially cyber warfare in the future to, I'm, I'm surprised the CIA or, or, or the uh, Mossad or you name it, is not uh, at your doorstep right now. Um, all, all I can say is it's, it's happening, but you know, governments aren't ready to build on a public network yet. So uh, the internet computer um, isn't like other blockchains in the sense that you can you know, just download all its blocks. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the technology discards blocks actually, it doesn't need them for its security. After, after a period of time. And, you know, there's just too many blocks. And so the, the smart contract, you know, the data of canister smart contracts is uh, replicated across, you know, node machines and different places run by node providers. But, you know, in principle, um, those node providers could go to their node machines and sort of open them up and <laughs> start looking at the data. And um, actually, we've got some some things to protect against that in, in the public network. But you know, a, 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 a lot of governments and corporations aren't quite ready to to gamble on the honesty of node providers just yet. <laughs> so uh, we've we've, <laughs> we've got another technology coming called Utopia, which effectively allows uh, corporations and government governments, and NGOs, the militaries to um, cr create their own uh, internet. Computers, if you like, um, yeah. uh, called, called utopias that are compatible with the internet computer, compatible with okay. each other, um, but they control. They then control the nodes that create these utopias themselves, so they can very, um, you know, closely guard that that data. And I can tell you that there are a lot of countries in the world right now that um, want to create sovereign cloud infrastructure. 
Yeah, right. And uh, the, the beautiful thing about Utopias is that uh, Utopia, by the way, is an acronym. It stands for Unstoppable, Tamper Proof, Open Platform for Independent Autonomy. And uh, these clouds are fantastic because, you know, on the one hand, they're tamper proof and unstoppable. So, you know, the nodes can go down, they keep running, the nodes can be hacked, they keep running without a hitch. Um, the systems and services you built on them don't need you build on them don't need protecting with firewalls. Um, they're highly flexible, so you can add and remove nodes as you like. The open source, you know, the actual nodes themselves are open source, so you can uh, be absolutely sure there's no foreign uh, backdoors or kill switches, and you develop with this wonderful, you know, serverless smart contract code that really improves your productivity. And it's the only serverless cloud technology in the world today which is stateful. So uh, the, the, the technology kind of makes the data stick to the code of the mm -hmm. smart contracts in a something called the technical term is orthogonal persistence. And it really not only reduces R&D costs um, and simplifies code, but it also allows you to build systems and services without traditional platform software uh, like databases. And, and the world spends you know, more than $900 billion a year on software licenses, so you can address right. that cost. You can address your uh, R&D and IT personnel efficiency costs. I think the world spends about $1.8 trillion a year on IT personnel. Um, you obviously can reduce your cybersecurity costs. And most importantly, um, you can avoid the colossal costs that come with cyber breaches. Um, and you can get the peace of mind of knowing that you're running a system and service on a tamper-proof platform. You don't even need a firewall to protect it. It can never be infected with ransomware and stop working. So we are, uh, we are in fact, talking to uh, you know, a number of, of countries regarding sovereign cloud. And we've also, um, yeah, but, but this is an emerging thing that you'll see, I think, through 2024 projects. Yeah, I think Utopia. once we see someone break out with something like that, that will it'll start to set the tone. I think for maybe the next era of of compute uh, for sure. And it's, uh, it, yeah, and it's gonna, just one more thing. It's, it's going to be great for um, developers uh, building on on the internet computer. There are going to be these network effects where you know a Web three developer who, who maybe doesn't want to be so entrepreneurial can go and work in the enterprise space, and an right. enterprise developer fed up with the corporate world can go and be an entrepreneur in the Web three space. And not only that, um, you know, uh, people who've built like general purpose services, uh, you know, on the internet computer like Web three services, they can actually turn them into apps for the enterprise space. So, for example, okay, I mean, okay. I mean, yeah, I mentioned Open Chat. Um, it, you know, uh, governments will be able to, um, you know, upload that to create like a private Slack or, mm -hmm. you know, like a sovereign private Slack on the utopias. And then the developers will be able to sell support contracts um, to, to, to those users. So it's going to enable completely new uh, business models for Web3 developers. I want to get into this last question uh, that is really more around... Um, you know, how, how does this make sense, you know, from a financial standpoint, monetization, the potential here in terms of uh, staking, all the aspects of the finance side of this, Dominic. For, but by the way, for all of you guys listening in, make sure to smash the like button, give us a little bit of feedback on, do you like these kinds of videos when we do deep dives with uh, founders and uh, leads of some of these blockchain projects? We always love that input. But Dominic, when you look at your voting rewards, this is your staking in the governance system right now. Uh, these are annualized rewards for those of you looking at this on screen. Explain to me the, I guess, the business model of, you know, Definity and, and what Internet Computer is trying to do. How do you fund this right now? What is the process? With ETH, we know it's gas fees. But with ICP, it's a different model. Explain that to us. Right. So, um you know, the, the the network is created by these things called node machines, which are standardized hardware run by node providers around the world. There's no staking. And in a sense, the hardware itself is the stake. But right. there's a governance a governance layer. There's a there's a very, very sophisticated DAO called the network nervous system that's integrated with the uh, ICP internet computer protocol. And uh, you know, it's that that you know pulls new software updates onto the nodes to update the protocol, um, forms new subnets. And, and things like that. And to participate in the governance system, uh, you need the ICP um, token, and you stake it to create something called a voting neuron. And 
you can configure your a neuron if you want to vote automatically by following other neurons. And uh, it, it, you know, and that's how the network adapts and evolves. People submit proposals and they're either adopted or rejected. And um, what's unique about this network is that when proposals are adopted, uh, most of them are actually executed completely automatically. So okay. there's no backdoor, it's full decentralization. Now, um, there's a, um, a reward schedule, right, in terms of the maximum amount of uh, ICP that can result from this governance staking. And uh, it declines um, from uh, launch to, to about 5% a year. And, um, you know, I think, I think at the moment, probably about, I'm not sure, you know, maybe just a little less than half of the ICP in existence is staked inside that governance system, about, you know, north of $3 billion worth. And there are hundreds of thousands of people participating in it, I think. So it's definitely the biggest DAO in, in, in the world today. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in terms of how the network uh, economics work, um, computation is powered by something called cycles, which, you know, mm -hmm. roughly equivalent to gas on, on Ethereum, but they're kind of like a okay. separate token. And yep. you create cycles by um, uh, converting ICP tokens worth one XDR or SDR standard drawing right is like a, a currency defined by the IMF, which is a, derived from a basket of current currencies. And if you if you have ICP worth um, one XDR, um, you can convert that into one trillion cycles. Now, uh, internet computing uses reverse gas, so smart contracts pay for their own computation. And that means they're a bit like electric cars. You know, if you have a Tesla, you charge the Tesla up with electricity, you can drive it. As you drive around, the charge of the battery goes down. Once it's run out of electricity, it stops running and you have to charge it up to make it run again. Um, canister smart contracts are the same. You have to charge them up with cycles. And as long as they've got cycles, um, they, they, they can keep on running. So, you know, computation burns cycles. If they run out, anybody can send them more. Um, and if they run out and no one refills them with more cycles. They sort of disappear after three months. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah. As, as the amount of computation on the internet computer grows, and it, it's been growing steadily uh, since launch, um, so does the demand uh, for ICP grow because it, people need ICP to convert mm -hmm. it into cycles to, 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 to power their code. Yeah. Well, it gives us a li at least a little bit more of an insight to, you know, the... Uh, the monetization side of this. Uh, Dominic Williams, it's been great having you on the show. I love to dive in deep on this. So I learned a little bit more about ICP and what you guys are doing. So thanks for giving us an update today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it too. You, you bet. All right. So you guys are, as I said, if you have a project out there that you think, hey, we should maybe get a founder on the show or maybe a dev, uh, let us know. Just hit us up over on Twitter. You can catch our Twitter account, which is PBTV, Paul Barron TV, or my personal account, which is just at Paul Barron on X. You can find us out there. It's very simple. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.